In this video, I'm going to show you how to install and provision a Windows Server Core 2022. Server Core is great for learning PowerShell because without the GUI, it keeps you from using the path of least resistance and teaches you to treat your servers like cattle and not pets. I'll briefly go over the steps to create the virtual machine in vCenter to show the VM's configuration. Chapters are available to skip to the desired portion of the video. I'll create a new virtual machine on the NVMe data store on host number 3. Select Microsoft Windows Server 2022 64-bit for the guest OS version and check Enable Windows Virtualization Based Security. Click the drop-down on the hard disk and change the disk provisioning to thin provision. Then add two more thin provision hard disks of 10 gigabytes each for logs and other data as it's good security practice to keep those separate from the OS disk. Change the network adapter type from E1000E to VMX NAT3. New CD DVD drive should be changed from client device to data store ISO file and select the Windows Server 2022 ISO. Click Next and Finish and power on the VM. Choose the appropriate language and input and click Next. Click Install Now. Select the option Windows Server 2022 Standard Evaluation and click Next. Check the box to accept the Microsoft Software License Term and click Next. Choose Custom, select Drive 0 Unallocated Space and click Next. Wait until the install is complete and the server will restart automatically. Once the server is up, Select OK and enter a password that meets the complexity requirements to set the password for the built-in administrator account. Select OK when finished. I need to install the VM tools before I can do anything else. In the vSphere client, the domain controller 1VM is selected, so I can simply click on Install VMware Tools. I'm then prompted to mount the VM tools ISO. In sconfig, type option 15 to exit the sconfig menu and return to PowerShell. The command get volume will list the volumes with drive letters, which I will use to determine the drive letter of the mounted ISO. Change the directory to the D drive and enter get child item to list the directory contents. Run period backslash setup64.exe to start the installer. The installer window flashes and then disappears, so I'll minimize the command window to find the installer window again. Select the appropriate options and navigate through the wizard and reboot when prompted. The server configuration tool, called sconfig, will load automatically upon login. I'll choose the corresponding number and follow the on-screen directions to change the following. Set the host name. Set static IP address. Set the time zone. Disable telemetry. And install updates. Once those are completed, reboot the server. Type 15 to close sconfig and exit to PowerShell. Get volume does not show the two additional virtual hard disks that I added to the VM, so I'll need to format them. Get disk shows that the OS recognizes the two 10 gigabyte disks. I'll specify disk number one to select the first 10 gigabyte disk with get disk dash number one. I'll then pipe that into initialize disk and select a partition style of GPT. 
The pass-through parameter will allow me to pass the object through the pipeline to create an NTFS volume and assign a drive letter with the new volume command. In order to see the command parts better, I'll put the parts on a new line. The friendly name is optional, but assigning a label to the volume will help identify its contents. This drive will host the NTDS database of a domain controller, so I'll name it NTDS. I'll repeat the command with disk number 2, assign a different drive letter, and name it logs. Now that the drives are formatted and everything else is set, I can use this machine as a reference VM to export to an OVA template. But I recommend clearing the network config and the Windows security identifier before you do so. That concludes the video. Thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something.